you're going to watch me pace around this room. So if proximity to me bothers you, you should move to the back where I can't get to you. Um, it's just it's a force of habit. Uh, the other thing, I am a no frills. I don't do color on PowerPoint. So uh, part of that reason is because we're going to show some graphs, and I want you to be able to see the, um, the colors. And part of it's because I just don't do colors on PowerPoint. So I do apologize if you're looking for that. This might not be the presentation for you. Um, what we are looking at today, this is a um, transcript analysis of all the students at Monticello from last year's class alone who applied to in-state schools, both public and private, and what their transcripts told us. In years past, we've never done a transcript analysis specific. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't say In the last three years, we hadn't done a specific one. Uh, Leanne Brubaker, prior to that, had done one. Um, some of that information was dated because, as you know, our master schedule has changed. Uh, we now allow students to double up so they would get more classes into their high school curriculum. Uh, we have more AP and honors level classes and dual enrollment classes. So that's also an increase. And so using that information, we felt like we need to see what colleges were looking for from a student from Monticello. Um, so for seniors, I want you to know, this is not a prediction that you will or will not get into a college. All I'm trying to show you is, based on last year's data, what trends, what correlations of the class of 2013 indicated were indicated from students who got into or did not get into a specific school. For juniors, I want you to start planning. The college application process, while the actual applications aren't released generally until August 1st or September 1st, the process starts a long time before that. And all of you know, all you seniors know, you've, you've been taking classes for years, you've been preparing for this. That's the college application process that you've been in. Now, it wasn't the official process where you look at essay questions or you're looking at filling out your GPA, but all of you have been building a transcript. And ultimately, transcript, academic rigor, and uh, course comparison within our school, beyond our school, beyond our county, sometimes within our county, depending on the school, makes a difference. And you've been working in that process for the last three and a half years, in some cases, dating to eighth grade, some cases seventh grade, um, in, in four cases from our current class, sixth grade. Um, so as you are watching this, I want you to think about how you can prepare and plan for the college process. Um, this data I really want to tell you is not predictive. If I show you that it takes 5.85 AP classes or pinnacle classes to get into UVA, and you say, I got six, I'm in, that is not what I'm telling you. I am not telling you you're going to get in or that you're not going to get in. What I'm trying to tell you is, from 2013's Monticello High School seniors, the students who got into a school or didn't get into a school and what their transcript looked like. Okay? Uh, college application process is multifaceted. There's the application, there's essays, in some respects there's the interview, which Mr. Barron talked about. There is the um, GPA, rank, uh, deciles, SAT scores, ACT scores, SAT subject tests, um, extracurricular activities, leadership experiences, personal essay, recommendations by a counselor, recommendations by a teacher, in some cases, recommendations by a student. All the information is factored into this process. Some schools do a tremendous job of sorting through it, very holistic approach. Um, University of Virginia, University of Richmond, William & Mary do a tremendous job. Some schools are just numbers. Do you have the GPA? Do you have the decile rank? Do you have the SAT scores? Um, those tend to be your bigger institutions, Virginia Tech. George Mason, VCU. Um, some schools fall in that middle process where it's a little bit about the numbers and a little bit about the person. That'd be like your Mary Washington, your James Madison, your, your Longwoods. So, and there's no fault to any college how they do it. They do it by based on their philosophy, based on what's most efficient for them, and in a lot of cases based on how many <coughs> personnel they have in their, athletic, in their academic office um, for admissions. So um, trends are going to be apparent in this. There are going to be outliers. In fact, there's a parent in the room right now, and we'll, we may get to it. Um, the son of that parent is, was a little bit of an outlier for one of our schools. He presented a tremendous case to William and Mary, and he got in. Um, he didn't ultimately choose to go there, but I, he was an outlier. So when you look at it, you might be able to spot it. You might know who it is. I, I don't think you will. Um, but I want you to know that outliers do exist. This is just trends. This is not specific students. This is not specific predictions. This is just what happened last year. Alright, so like I said, this is the basis for data from 2013 senior graduates. It was as of the first week of June. I sent a request to every school in the state who had a statistically um, relevant number of applicants and decisions on their part from this school in Monticello. Um, if students were on the wait list as of the first week of June, more than likely they stayed there because schools have to be notified by May 1st if they're going to go to the school or not. 
And so a wait list should have been emptied out. If, the, if you're going to get off the wait list and you're waiting into June, you need to be finding another plan. Okay? Chances are you're not getting off. Um, only in-state schools were compared. We don't have a large enough pool going to out-of-state schools. Um, and to be frank, last we have a lot of in-state good, good in options. That's where I started. Uh, we are going to expand this in the future years, um, but just want you to know that this is where we started. And lastly, I am not a statistician. That was, I was a biological anthropology major at JMU. I do not do statistics. I can tell you trends. I can tell you averages. Um, I might be able to give you a standard deviation if you give me enough time. But I cannot give you a specific um, statistic like regression lines like Mr. Barron predicted that, or suggested that I make for some of these graphs. Uh, transcript analysis. When we went through the school or through the transcripts, I looked at every kid who got accepted versus every kid who got rejected to four schools, UVA, Virginia Tech, JMU, and William & Mary. Um, for pinnacle subjects is what I assess them for. Pinnacle subject is the highest subject area in a respective core area that a student could be expected to achieve. Um, so what I included in those, for English, AP English, or dual enrollment English. For social sciences, AP government, dual enrollment government, for math, AP calculus, AB, BC calculus, AP stats, honors calculus, and then honors math analysis. And for those of you who've been following Albemarle County, you know that honors trigonometry was added during the current senior class's high school experience. I didn't want to hold that against any ch student. However, we found that some schools did. And so I just went one class higher to honors math analysis because it's the last class before college mathematics, before you get to cal calculus or to statistics. So that was the bar that I used for, um, for math. For science, AP, physics, biology, chemistry, environmental science, and then honors physics, um, we'll talk about, I did notice a very strong trend. And then world language, fourth level or AP language. Okay, so when I went through every transcript, let's say for Mr. G. Gregoria, if he had gotten into UVA and he had taken AP English, he would have gotten a one. If he had taken AP government, another one. If he had gotten AP Spanish, another one. But maybe he didn't take any AP science. So in that category, he just got a zero. So I added up the totals for students who got accepted, found a percentage of what students who got accepted, what subject they took in com this comparison, and then also for students who were not accepted, what comparison, what, what percentage took a respective class. I also did it dating back to the 11th grade for AP English and Dual Enrollment English, or excuse me, AP English and Honors English and Dual Enrollment U.S. History and AP U.S. History. However, we're not going to present that because those students haven't gotten to college yet. I'm going to base that in two years. Um, that's good. All right, um, again, you want to, can't hammer this away. This is not predictive. I don't want you to walk out of here saying, Mr. Southwell told me I'm getting into Virginia Tech, and then you don't get Virginia Tech. I, I can't say that. That's an admissions decision. This is just trends. All right, some terminology. For um, those of you who don't read a transcript very often, GPA stands for uh, grade point average. We use a 4.0 system. We rank based on a weighted GPA. Weighted GPA gives credit for doing honors level work. So honors, AP, or dual enrollment counts for one point higher when you calculate your GPA. So where normally an A counts for four points, and an AP or an honors or dual enrollment it counts for five. A B counts for four instead of counting for three. A C counts for three instead of two. So everyone good with that? Um, for rank, it's based on the GPA. We, if you were to line everybody up based on GPA highest to lowest, we would chunk you into deciles. So the first 10 highest would be considered the first decile. The next 10%, second decile, next 10%, third decile, all the way down to the 10th decile. We don't rank, we don't report specific rank in Alamore County per policy. Um, if you would like to discuss that further, there's going to be some board meetings soon. Um, I encourage you to read the article that was in the paper. Um, be informed because this decision will affect your children in some way. Okay, so no bias, no no pros or cons <coughs> on my part. Be informed and talk to your representatives. Um, I believe that Mr. Hahn will be Dr. Hahn will be here Tuesday at four o'clock um, before parent teacher night. If you would like to discuss it with him, um, cumulative. SAT means critical reading, math, and writing. And then just critical reading and math SAT is also reported. Some schools don't use the writing. In fact, most schools still don't use the writing as an indicator for admissions. Um, UVA is the only school in the state that right now tells us that they even look at it. And they're not even sure quite what to do with it because they haven't been looking at it long enough. And research shows that if you just write a lot, you tend to get a better score. More words, higher score. And as a result, a lot of schools aren't using it because you can beat that system. <laughs> okay. All right, so talking about actual applicants. This is the total number of applicants to these institutions that replied to my email. JMU got the most requests. Nearly 70 students applied to James Madison, UVA second, William Mary, James X, CNU, and down the list. 
Um, this is, again, this is just in-state, so if you're thinking, wow, you didn't send very many kids to college. There are a lot of kids who went elsewhere uh, out of state schools, and some schools didn't reply. Um, and schools like uh, Virginia State, for example, we wanted to assess them. We only had four kids apply. Statistically, that what I couldn't draw any conclusions from that. I could, there wasn't just enough students to look at. So if you're wondering who got in, similar to the number of applicants, Jamie, you had the most students accepted, followed by UVA, and this is a very interesting phenomenon that happened. Virginia Tech accepted every student from the class of 2013 that applied to Virginia Tech. Okay, I would love to tell you that the counseling office did phenomenal advising. <laughs> I love, and in my head, the, the first time I looked at that, after a couple hours of looking at data, I was like, man, we did a great job. <laughs> and that was probably not the case. This is probably a result of, they have a novel application, which we talked about in the first session, um, which means you have to fill out all the same information that you did for UVA or William Mary or Mary Washington all over again. And the second thing is they have early decision instead of early application or early action. So if you apply early, you, it's a binding deal. So very few of our kids are so sure that Virginia Tech's the place to go for them on November 1st that they don't apply. So those two facts probably led to why our numbers are a little bit lower and why every one of them that applied also got in. Because you'll see they're not necessarily very wide different students. They're very similar in a lot of ways. Um, William & Mary, you'll notice, had, a large, had 30 applicants and roughly 50% of them didn't get in. Um, that is, uh, you're going to see the statistics, that's rough, that's probably our toughest university that replied to us to get into from Montreal's perspective from the class of 213. Okay. Um, next. If you're wondering as far as actual admits versus de denial versus wait list, this is it. it. It reads left to right. So admits are on the first bar, denials on the second bar, waitlist third, and then the totals are fourth. Um, it's in the brochure. It, when you look at it, I realize it's grayscale and that's really painful to read. Um, but read it left to right for its um, for the legend. How many students in the graduating class? It's two hundred and. I think we started with, with three hundred six. We started with three hundred six, but then was, we had transfers and we had a couple kids who. Extended stay. Decile was based on 304. 304, yes. Okay. All right, so let's start with the University of Virginia. On the top left, you are looking at the averages. For the average accepted, average denial, average waitlist student. You can see the GPA, average GPA is a 4.5. For those of you who have studied our decile in the past, our um, top decile generally is about a 4.5. Okay. If you look, average decile of getting accepted was 1.5. Now I realize you're like, what's the 1.5 decile? It's roughly the top 15% of our student body was the average student that got in. Obviously, as an average, there's some that are higher than, there are some that are lower than. Everyone knows how averages work. Um, I do want to direct your attention to the decile graph on the right. And these slides are going to be the same for each university that we look at. So if you're wondering, like, I don't have a title for decile, it's still decile every single time. On the right, still critical reading and math and GPA listed on the bottom, and always the averages on the top left. First decile, more than 20 students. The vast majority of kids who got into UVA from Monticello, first decile kids. Okay, um, they're the they were a four-year period highest achieving students in the building. Doesn't mean they're the most successful. Doesn't mean they're the hardest working. Doesn't mean they're necessarily the smartest. Okay, but they're the students who are present with transcript. The transcripts presents to UVA, they are identified as being generally the most successful academically. Okay. Um, we did have uh, students in the second decile. There's been misleading fact that UVA doesn't take anybody from the second decile. That's not true. It is tougher. It's absolutely tougher. The numbers go way down. Um, and then students from the third decile, um, it did get in. We had two, I believe, that got in from the third decile. Um, I do want to point your attention to the UVA critical reading and math GPA. Uh, Scatter gram. The bottom left, where that graph starts for GPA on the bottom axis, on the x axis, is a 3.8. The first person that applied was a was above a 4.1. It breaks my heart all the time when kids come in and they have a 3.9, maybe they had a great junior year, they're trying hard for their senior year, they're ramping up the rigor, and they're sitting at a 3.9. The reality of getting into a university like UVA with a 3.9 is not good. There's no way around that. Unfortunately, there are students who don't produce the same 
academic success as another student. And when it comes to that ranking, that's not the end all. Your decile does not eliminate you from getting into a university by itself. Your decile combined with maybe your SAT scores, with your extracurriculars, with your course rigor, with your recommendations, with all the information you put into the application, that will get you into university. So I don't want to say that just because you have a 3.9 you're not getting in, but I do want to say that it's tough. Really, really tough. Mr. So, Chappell, yes. um, in, the, in the first decile group, what did you say their average GPA is? For a first decile student, we are actually building our rank right now, so I can't answer for this current senior okay. class. Uh, for last year's senior class, it was about a 4.5 is where the cutoff was, roughly. 4.72? 4.76. Was the average? Six. Was no, the no, that's, the, that's the, the range. Was 4.76 oh. was roughly our highest GPA. Oh. Um, 4.5 was about the cutoff. Okay. <coughs> so, next slide. This is what a UVA student profile looked like. The average kid from Monticello that went to UVA had a 4.5 GPA, have an average decile of uh, top 15%. SAT, um, without the writing, was a 13.16. Their cumulative SAT was about a 19.29, including the writing. Now, this is <coughs> courses. When I tallied up every, every course, every, every kid who had gotten in, this was the most likely class that that student had taken. This is not saying that if I recommend taking AP English, it does not mean that doing wrong in English prevents you from getting in. It just means that in the class of 2013, the kids who got into UVA, majority of which took AP English at a rate of 97%. Okay, three percent of the kids who took dual enrollment English took. three percent of the kids who got into UVA took dual enrollment English. That is not to say that dual enrollment English prohibits you or stops you, or that any dual enrollment class does. It just indicates that from last year's class, four of them took AP. Okay, in math, everybody got to college level math. Honors calculus are higher. Honors math analysis is not adequate for UVA. You would not, you will have a very slim chance of getting in with honors math analysis. Honors calculus, and to be honest with you, AP math was really what they were looking for. The higher percentages were in AP calculus or AP stats. Uh, when it came to science, honors physics. 87% of students who got into UVA took honors physics. That was far and away the one unanimous subject, honors physics. Your kid is in chemistry right now, and they're thinking, well, maybe I'll go into honors anatomy or, or one of the other AP scientists. I really encourage you to have a long talk about honors physics. Okay? It was a subject that across all four transcript analysis showed up in heavy numbers. Not to say if you haven't taken physics, you're not going to get in. Kids who didn't have physics certainly got in. But that was a strong indicator. It showed up over and over and over again. For the UVA, the AP sciences, all, all four of them, physics, biology, chemistry, and environmental science, showed up. So what we're recommending is get the honors physics and then get into an AP science. When it comes to social studies, AP government, far and away, was selected. And then with language, AP language, 50% of the kids who got into UVA took AP language. Okay, they, some of which, uh, uh, 20 or like 13% um, went on beyond it, whether that was PGCC or UVA or an online class. Uh, but 50% of them did get through an AP language. That last number, average number of pinnacle subjects. The University of Virginia, the, they took in an average of 5.85 pinnacle subjects, the highest level in a given area. So, that, and you're probably thinking, well, there's only four core classes and then the language. So four plus the five, one, that's, they only put you at five. That means kids are taking more sciences or more maths or more languages than they needed to. They didn't stop at just doing a four sign, or they didn't stop at just doing one AP science, they might have doubled up. Or they might have doubled up in an area um, like language, like they did. They got through an AP language, and they already started on another language to get to the fourth level. Do they count if you're taking the course in your senior year while you're applying? Yes, they do. <laughs> Every transcript we send shows it's in-progress work. So you're gonna, those colleges are going to see not only where you started, where you were in the middle, but what you're culminating with. Do other AP social sciences count? Like AP psychology did not show a trend, um, and I didn't. I'd be honest with you. I stopped counting it after William and Mary, so that's my second school. Because so many students were taking it as sophomores, that I didn't feel like it was indicative of the highest level possible in an AP science. Well, what about AP, AP U.S. history? And those well, things? the last year's class, 
we didn't have kids taking AP World because it was considered a freshman subject, and so they, they weren't enrolled in it. This year's class, more kids have taken it. Um, AP Human Geography didn't exist for it. It existed, but very few students took it, so that also wasn't factored out. Okay. Any other questions? Or move on? All right. William Mary is next. Average GPA, 4.57. We married. 0.07 higher than UVA. Uh, average decile 1.2. 0.3 lower on the average decile. Now I do want to point out this one did have an outlier. Third decile student. We had one student from the third decile get in. He presented a tremendous case uh, for William and Mary. He expressed a lot of interest. He had a unique major that he wanted to um, look into, and so he was a, he was a very strong student. And his upward trend was phenomenal. Where he started as a freshman to where he finished as a senior was really, really impressive. So while there are outliers and there are trends, it's the case that you present ultimately that gets you in or doesn't get you into a college. Um, when again, want to emphasize where that GPA starts on the bottom graph, 4.0. And nobody even close. Everyone was a 4.3 or higher. Um, do you want to emphasize that 4.3 was the third decile kid. So if you're 4.3 is your third decile, we clearly have a lot of high achieving students in Monticello. Um, those. I, I, I do want to apologize. If you look on the decile titles across the x-axis on the decile graph, it says fourth plus. I apologize. That was my fault for not catching that. I built this and then I realized we had more, for a couple other schools, we had dipping into the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and I wanted to give credit to those universities. And so I didn't take it out before I built the graph. I apologize. All right, so Whitmere profile, 4.5 GPA, I mean 4.57 GPA, decile 1.2. Um, SAT, math and reading, was a 1444. Historically, in the counseling office, we have set, suggested having a, at least a 1250, not counting the writing in your SAT. That's what we've emphasized. Um, I, I think we are going to have to adjust our sites. I think that, that number's going up. And in order to give you better advising, I personally am, am starting to recommend at least a 1300. Now, if you know that William Mary is your top choice and you're going there no matter where else you get in, I do encourage you to apply early decision. They have told us, their admissions officer told us that their pool is smaller, so there's less com competition for the early decision pool. However, we don't track early decision versus early action versus regular decision, so I can't say that with definitive, any kind of definitive statement. But they've told us that it is. Our previous um, gifted and talented coordinator, Ms. Brugger, had those stats as well, or she had that belief, and so I do want to emphasize it. I can't say it definitively, but we have good reason to believe that's the case. Um, when it comes to pinnacle subjects, AP English, AP Calculus, or AP Stats, Honors Calculus seemed to be the plateau. That seemed to be the hump that kids needed to get over into AP AB or AP BC. Um, stats was also highly selected. However, a large number of kids did both Calculus and Stats when it came to William and For Sciences, again, Honors Physics, highly selected, and then specifically AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Physics. Uh, AP Environmental Science, not because we are saying it didn't get you into William Mary, but because nobody actually took it that applied to William Mary. So I, I can't say for sure that it, it makes or doesn't make a difference. Social Science is AP Government. World Language, AP level. Don't stop at the fourth year. Keep going. Um, and then average medical subject, 5.75, uh, which was a little bit higher than, uh, no, it was a little bit lower, 5.85 was UVA. 5.75 uh, was William and Mary. Um, I can't really explain that other than that one third decile kid did pull it down a little bit and it was a smaller pool. So one kid makes a bigger difference when it comes to averages and metrics. James Madison University. Personal bias. It's a great school. Everyone should go there. Um, uh, if you want to talk about it, I'm happy to talk about it later. I got lots of information I can rattle off. Uh, but JMU is a little more forgiving when it comes to admissions. Um, average decile, 4.3. Dipping down into the average was our dipping down into 2.6 or the almost the third decile. Uh, we had students from the first decile all the way down to the fifth get into JMU. Now they do a very holistic approach. If you don't think you have the academics or the rigor or the SAT scores, you can present a better case through your essay, through your extracurriculars. Um, they will meet with you um, if you go down there. Uh, our representative is a nice guy. He's very honest. He's very forthright. He'll tell you right up front if he thinks you got a shot or not. Um, and he's, but he's, he's generally pretty accurate. Um, uh, again, want to emphasize 3.5 GPA. That's where our graph started. Okay? Uh, I really don't want you to come in with 2.9 and go, I love JMU. I have lots of friends that go there. 
Uh, there is a joke. JMU is Monticello <coughs> University. Um, you saw, every one of you saw, more kids applied to JMU than any other school in the state. Uh, more kids got into JMU than any other school in the state. Okay? There's, there is a reason for that. Now, my bias aside, um, JMU offers a lot in the way of student opportunity. Okay? They are they're a little more forgiving when it comes to the admission standards, but they do provide a very high quality education with a lot of access to professors. They do have the SAS, they do have the Division I Athletics, they do have a social life, as you may have heard in many news broadcasts. Okay? Um, I can't take away from any of that. All that adds to the college experience. I do you want to emphasize JMU, and then the next one is going to be Virginia Tech, but we'll get to that in a second. JMU, uh, again, 4.3, 2.6 decile. Um, SAT, 1174, that was the average. Our kids below 1100. I had a parent last week asked me, like, I'm below 1100, I have a shot getting anywhere, anywhere. They do. It's hard. It's not the end all. But it, is, it does make your, your package harder when you're trying to sell yourself. When it comes to the cumulative SAT score, 1732, including the writing, JMU has not given us any indication they look at the writing, so I don't want to mislead you with that. Okay? Um, just report it, because I report it for everyone else. English, AP English, was highly selected. Uh, honors calculus are higher. Again, honors math analysis was the hump. Get over it, get into the next level. Don't stop at math analysis. Okay? Um, science, honors physics, again, highly selected. And then any AP science. They were all accepted at high numbers. Um, across all four AP sciences. When it came to social studies, AP government. And then when it came to world language, a fourth year, this is different from UVA or in Mary, uh, AP language was accepted, but it wasn't, it, the students who got in didn't necessarily get through it in high percentages. Okay. Um, average clinical subject, 5.11. So just above five clinical subjects. Again, pointing out four cores, one language, that puts you at five. So you're looking at doubling up at least somewhere and either your junior or senior year, depending on what, where you, when you hit those people <coughs> areas. Virginia Tech, again, nobody got declined. So it's a little misleading, and I can't say that I can compare the admission, you know, the admits versus the, the rejections. But um, just trend data, average GPA was a 4.35, average decile was a 2.3, a little bit higher than JMU, a little, about a, um, a whole decile lower than UVA or William & Mary. Um, GPA, uh, we had a student dip down below 3.75 who did get in, um, but for the most part, everyone was above 4.0. Um, I have, I have to be honest, I have very little to say about Virginia Tech because we don't have a good comparison for decline or wait list. Um, but student profile, um, other kids who got in, you can read the averages again for yourself, but AP English, honors calculus are higher, honors physics, any AP science, AP government, and then a fourth year of language. And I, I forgot to mention, when I say of a language, they don't care. <coughs> Latin, French, German, Spanish, no preference <coughs> whatsoever. Um, and then average clinical subjects, 5.48, which was higher than JMU. Lower than the other two, higher than JMU. So when it comes to those um, subjects, they, some of those students, may, more of the students were doubling up in a clinical subject than JMU, few less than UVA. <coughs> All right, and then when you're looking at just average clinical subjects. I know people, someone asked me like, well, what does a kid who got rejected look like? Just to give you an idea. These were the average pinnacle, number of pinnacle subjects for the rejected versus the admitted. Okay, obviously you can see a trend. The higher it is, the more likely you were to get in. Any questions before we go any further? I'm doing a lot of information. Just for clarification, so you're saying that these kids took you said averages of 5.85, so we're saying that they took five or six classes and passed them, is that what we're saying? Correct. Six AP classes. Correct. Or Before. seven or eight, potentially. Se or seven or eight, but the average was they took, eight. let's just go ahead and say it's 5.85, six AP classes Correct. and passed them. Yes, ma'am. Now, does that factor in whether or not they passed the AP exam? No. We didn't look at any AP exam scores when we did this, or I, I didn't look at any AP exam scores. It, um, they're not reported to us until well into the summer, and a lot of schools, until the AP exams don't make a difference for admissions. It makes a difference for course credit once you get to university. Okay. And so these are including kids now. You said it didn't factor in the AP geog human geography. They didn't have that course when they were uh, moving through their, their classes. Gotcha. But... For the kids that are coming up, basically any AP course that they took from ninth grade to senior year. Yes, ma'am. And how that would factor. Yes, ma'am. 
So when it says pinnacle, I'm tallying all the way through high school. Right? I'm sorry. When it says pinnacle, I'm saying that they've achieved the highest level of those courses we talked about at the beginning, the pinnacle subjects. That's an average of how many of that listing they took. Right now, for UVA, William Mary, JMU, and Virginia Tech, I'm not saying they won't get in. I'm saying that they will have to present a, another aspect of the application. In order to, uh, whether it's be the... Um, because I don't recall, and I've spoken to my daughter's counselor, I don't recall ever hearing that well, she, if she wants to get into a school, she better take an AP course. Do you see what I'm saying? So Absolutely. now she's in her junior year, mm -hmm. no AP courses. She's done honors, and you know, is luckily in her fourth year of Spanish. But we don't have one AP course on the resume, and she's got you know a really good grade point average. But if it's looking like they're taking all these AP courses, again, this is, is, she, her resume is looking really bad. Again, this is not predictive. So I'm not saying your daughter by presenting this information. I'm saying your daughter won't get in. All I'm saying but is, it seems like the AP courses are helping. They do make a difference. I, I believe they do make a difference. I can't say of what percentage of the entire application, the holistic look that the admissions officer looks at. I can't say AP courses are the end all. I will say that generally our students who are in the top decile or second decile and third decile take more AP or dual enrollment or honors level classes than students in lower deciles. And it, it'll also not take AP courses will lower her average because the AP courses have the five that other courses might not. I wouldn't say that they don't, but they would. And I think it's important too to, to just note that yes, the number one thing that stu schools typically say they're looking for is the rigorous program of study, but doing well in it. And so, you know, taking that honors level class that doing very well in that compared to taking an AP that maybe was out of their reach earlier on and not doing as well, you know, because of that GPA correlation, it, you know, it's, that's significant. Is it an extra half point for all? No, no. Honors, AP, oh, honors and dual enrollment are all, all the same. same. So when your daughter's GPA is it's all correct. one, so when your daughter's GPA is calculated, it includes it's it's the AP that the kid might be taking in the next room, and if they get a fab, a, a counts as fab. Your daughter taking honors level in this, the room right next to it gets an A. It also counts for a fab. So in a GPA, when you're looking at average GPA, those GPAs can still be similar. They're still comparable. Your daughter, and I, and I don't know your daughter, but she may be in the first decile, second decile, third decile, or she may be in the fifth decile. I, I can't speak to that. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you one on one afterwards about what her yeah, just, trajectory looks like. Because the other thing, maybe. Based on what she said, too, it's, I'm just a little worried like, wow, we didn't really realize that we should have maybe have her in the AP classes because it may make a difference at the college. And, and in, all honesty, in all honesty, and, 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 um, it, it, it could. There's no way around it. It could. And make I a wish difference. we would have known that back in freshman year that, you know, hey, listen, you're going to start taking some AP courses. Uh, absolutely, I understand. And I, that, that, that mm -hmm. feeling that of the worry that maybe we've set our daughter up for or something that she wants and she can't achieve, that's not to say that dual enrollment courses that she may have earned or honors level courses um, aren't benefiting her in her transcript and in building an academic application for her college. Um, <coughs> it, if it's okay with you, I'd like to argue individually afterwards. We can talk about where, more specifically <coughs> where she's at in each area and what we can do if you want to look at ramping up the rigor um, looking into senior year. Um, again, these are averages, so when you say 5.1 is the average, there's potential to get four AP classes potentially five, if you really want to crank it up, you could achieve a lot of AP courses very quickly. Now, is that appropriate? I don't know. I don't know your daughter's strengths and weaknesses. Um, is she, would she be recommended for it? I don't know. So that would be a, a whole list decision to talk about with the counselor, talk about with your daughter, make sure your daughter's on board for the amount of work that that would involve. But if you stick around, we'll talk individually afterwards. Any other questions? Um, where can you find your, your child's GPA and that? Uh, your GPA, uh, we actually have this issue with the parent portal. Yeah. It, it does report a GPA. Right. However, we believe that what the GPA that's being reported is actually the current, like in term GPA that you're that um, Emily or CC is earning right now. Mm -hmm. oh, not, the right. not the chemo. And I have, we're going to check with downtown because we don't have the rights to sh change what shows. Um, it's a, I don't know the answer to what's showing that. If you specifically would just like to know your student's GPA, I encourage you email, call your counselor. We can look it up. <laughs> 
Um, no problem. We can, we can get right back to you. That's not an issue. So. Okay, and the Do decile group, decile can be uh, decile we do per county policy. We don't rank until the fall of the senior year. <coughs> oh. And we don't release exact rank ever. We only do <coughs> decile rank. Okay, so right now the current senior class is being in the process of the ranking being created. We have senior grades from the summer, from independent studies, some um, online classes that are being factored in. To the, G, to the GPA. Before we can do the rank, we need to get those classes done. Do you have a tool or access to a tool that would be able to predict um, if, if you have a certain GPA and a certain percentile of the schools that you would get there? Um, without putting in too much of my bias, no. There is a program out there called Naviance that we would love the school system to invest in. Um, however, that's something that you should talk yeah, to so the year about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to your right about. Um, but Naviance does do that. Um, we personally do not keep uh, um, up with a program to do that other than me at my desk every summer. It's a couple years. So I'm sorry, that's probably not the answer you were looking for. But, um, no, that's what I just wanted to, I, I, yeah, I knew about Naviance. Any other questions? There's one over here. And for those of you who don't know, uh, this is uh, Laura Gaskin. She's also a school counselor. And this is Urban Johnson in the back in the suit. Um, he's the counseling department chair. All right, so just a couple rundown of a couple of universities around the school around the state. University of Richmond, um, private liberal arts university in, in Richmond, uh, phenomenal institution. Um, they are a um, a good hand -like university. Your students are going to get a lot of ability to do <coughs> research, work with professors. They do have graduate programs, so there are some TAs, but generally class sizes are small. Uh, the cost does scare people away. Um, I'm gonna run out of time, aren't I? I'm way past it, aren't I? I'm sorry. If anyone needs to leave, I won't be offended. Um, University of Virginia, uh, strong school. It costs us people, run people away. However, its uh, financial aid process meets 100% of demonstrated need. So something to consider. Um, Old Dominion University in um, down in Tidewater area. Um, good school. A little more forgiving on the GPA. You'll notice a 3.83 GPA and a decile rank going into the 4.7 decile. Um, they did accept students. Um, as far back as the sixth decile. Um, however, they did have students who applied and got declined in, in uh, the same uh, decile. So I want you to be very aware they don't have a wait list. You're either in or you're out with all the money. Radford, uh, down Radford, Virginia, near Virginia Tech, Southwest Virginia. Um, want to point out where the GPA scale starts here. Um, I started that one at zero because we had students as low as uh, in the twos applying to Radford. Um, Radford does have a reputation that Unfortunately, sometimes known as a party school. Um, any school you go to can be a party school, and parents who are in college can tell you that. They want to let they admit that. Um, don't be misled by reputations. Go see the school for yourself. Find out what the institution offers you. Um, when it comes to Radford, they are very forgiving, but they do offer students a, a strong opportunity. So, um, students are interested in nursing, uh, may not be able to get into a UVA or a JMU. Nursing in Radford is a strong program, they have, they have nearly 100% job placement. Um, that's one I know this specifically. Um, we've also had students, um, we have many faculty members here, faculty members here who went through the education program at, J at Radford. Um, so I do want to encourage you to take a look at it if there's some programs that you might be interested in. Or if you're looking for a school that might be a little more forgiving, potentially a safety school, um, one that you've already achieved and, and surpassed their expectations. Christopher Newport University Public School down in Newport News. Um, Many people hear Newport News and they worry about the city. It's a small, closed off campus. They do a lot for student resources. Everything on Christian Newport's campus is new. In 1999, when I was applying to colleges, it was a very a little bit kind of wearing down. Um, and then Paul Tribble, um, he's a motivational speaker for Oprah and for Apple and a couple of our big companies around the country. Um, Paul Tribble is now the president, and apparently being a motivational speaker helps because you get motivate people to get money to university, <laughs> um, including state representatives. So they have a lot of new stuff. Everything is new. Um, they specialize very much in the fine arts. Um, they have a leadership program that's excellent, gives students tremendous internship opportunities. And if your student is maybe in the uh, high threes, low fours, and they're looking for a school that's going to really cater to them, take care of them, and try and, and try and bring out some of their talents, Christopher Newport offers a lot in that regard. So I do encourage you to take a think about Christopher Newport. Uh, Longwood, Farmville, Virginia. Um, Longwood is a unique place. It's um, a small town, not a lot going on, no way around that. Um, but it does offer a good hands-on experience for students, um, particularly their education. Um, we have a, we've had students go down there looking for education, and they come away with jobs, and they get a lot more experience because 
being a small town with only one university and being a small university with roughly 4,600 students, um, those students get much more handling experience when it comes to their education experience, their internships and job placement. Um, they were a little more forgiving. They let students in all the way back to the eighth decile. But those students did all, all does offer on-site admissions. They will come to Monticello in the spring and they will let, they will apply, let you apply and they'll tell you right then or there. Mr. Johnson, you're in. Mr. Johnson, you're out. And if you're out, they'll tell you why. And if you're in, they'll tell you where you're going to be and where, how you fit into the freshman class. All right, so that was the end of my college data. Um, I know I'm going to let you guys go very quickly, but I wanted, this is not predictive. I want to tell you that. Not predictive. Just trends. Okay? Um, college application process is multifaceted. Plan ahead. Please plan ahead. Seniors, this is for, this is for assessing if you're applying to the right schools. Underclassmen, this is about planning for where you need to be. Okay. Um, preparation for college admissions begins early. It's early as sixth and seventh grade in some respects. Okay. If you're looking outwards, you're trying to project where you want your student to be, it starts very, very early. Um, college planning involves careful consideration of course selection. It's not just what your friends are taking. This is not just, um, it's also not just the most challenging available. You want to take classes that are appropriate for your student. Classes that teachers recommend your student for, that they've taken classes to prepare for. Um, very often, I know Mr. Barron used to be an AP U.S. History teacher. We would have sophomores coming out of Honors World History II, and they were ready, they, were, they I, I got an A, I'm ready to jump into AP U.S., and they don't realize the level from Honors World History II to AP U.S. is a big jump. It's tremendous. It is tough for some kids. The level of independent work goes way up. The level of draft goes way up. The level of intellectual ability generally goes way up. Okay, so I really want to encourage you. It's careful consideration. You don't want to just load up on APs, but you also don't want to lowball it, trying to look for the safest opportunity just to get all A's. Um, and then lastly, regular school counselor meetings. Uh, I do encourage you, meet with your school counselor. Email us, call us. If we don't respond, um, me personally, I'm better at email. If you're on my caseload, some of you already know that. <laughs> um, but all of us, please, reach out to us, contact us, get involved. Um, this process is stressful. And unfortunately, it's, it's rigorous and it's challenging and it's, it's, a, um, it's a unique experience because not many places in life do you fill out applications for months and months, find out you're in or out, and then dedicate four specific years or five specific years to it. For adults, it's like the job application process, but like you adults, you guys potentially could get out of a job. And you can't get out of college, but not without the investment, the time, the money, the education, the social network. So I want you to be as invested in this process as possible. It's really important. Go see the schools, do the research, meet with people, um, and come to the talk on Tuesday at 4 o'clock about ranking and design. All right? Last, any questions? If you would like, oh yes. What's your email? Uh, A southall at k12.org. All right. I'm on the school website.